Hi, everybody. Welcome to this product briefing from Empowering Cloud. I'm looking forward to this one because there's not loads of information out there on this topic. Um, I've got Shannon Martin from Landis, and we're going to talk attendant console. Shannon, do you just want to introduce yourself, please? Yes. Thanks, Tom. I'm Shannon Martin with uh, Account Executive here at Landis Technologies, and I specialize uh, in the attendant console uh, from Landis. And so uh, this is having a conversation about attendant console is what I do. Yeah, I spoke to uh, Preston and he was like, yeah, Shannon's the guy for this. And we're going to we're gonna get into uh, all the questions. Yeah. Let's start off with the fundamentals because not everyone necessarily knows like what is an attendant console and what is the use case here? So the attendant console is software for that uh, person who is answering calls and transferring them within the organization. And so that is the receptionist, switchboard operator, and then in some cases, that's who we primarily think of is that receptionist user that is answering those calls and transferring them. But we've also found it quite effective in boss admin situations in a number of industries, whether it's legal or private equity, where they have a executive assistant who is maybe working with several executives. And th this has been quite helpful for them, partially because of the visibility they have of the team's presence of everybody that's in the company. That's interesting. So there's a power user use case. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. And this was like back in the day, this would have been a, a physical device where they could tap buttons and transfer. Yeah. And then in the kind of the IP telephony yeah. days, we got to software and, and you guys had a super popular option for Skype business. I felt like that was in like every yeah. customer at one point. Yeah. Yeah. We had a very large deployment in Skype for business. And we now in the teams world, we have a couple, we have a, a few other products, a recording solution and the contact center, but our history as is all around this seat, this receptionist seat. Yeah. So you've got the strong heritage here. So maybe you could show us what you're doing with Teams. We get a bit of a demo. Yeah, absolutely. Let me uh, share a screen here, Tom, and we'll take a look at that. So I am using the uh, desktop version of the attendant console. And one of the things to keep in mind is that we have, there, there's two versions of this. And one is uh, a web app and one is a desktop. And I want to start uh, actually ahead of that. I want to share a slide with you because it helps to talk about how this works within the environment. Awesome. Uh, so this is a, a slide of our looking at the architecture. So as, as you well know, the Microsoft talks about the different ways that software can integrate with teams. And so they talk about extend and connected and power. And so in the case of a connected tenant console, you would have that call coming into the organization's tenant. And then by a direct routing, it would be taken out and taken into the software company servers. There, the functionality would be added to the call and then it would be routed back into their tenant. That's not what we're doing. As a power solution, that call is coming into the organization's tenant and it's staying there. And we're simply using the Microsoft native APIs to signal back and forth and tell teams what to do with that call. From a architectural point, it's just there's fewer links in the chain. It's simpler this way. And then from a security standpoint, it, even when we get into highly regulated industries, it usually works very well with security because that call data is never traversing our server. It's staying yeah. right there within their tenant. Yeah. And, and importantly here, like there are some contact center solutions that have a software add-on to give the the attendant console experience, but they're using the contact center to root. But that's not what you're doing here. Your your attendant console stands alone, doesn't need the yeah. contact center. Completely standalone product. So uh, with that, then back to the attendant console itself. And the thing to keep in mind here is this attendant console, it, it's becoming an endpoint, a team's endpoint for that user that's logged into it. Just like the, the mobile app on the phone is an endpoint or a desktop phone can be an endpoint, the attendant console is an endpoint. And so what that means is if they already have their call structure set up with call queues or auto attendance or whatever, don't have to touch them. Any call that would present itself to this user in native teams will now present itself in the attendant console. And I think it's worth calling out how you guys have done such a nice job of making this look and feel like teams. I know your, your team are pretty pretty obsessed about the detail here, but this is your software application. So it looks like Teams, but you run this yeah. desktop client. Exactly. Yeah. We're, uh, our goal is always to speak the same language as Teams so that there's not that contrast of jumping back and forth. Uh, this is a desktop app uh, and I'll 
bring in a, a live call in a second and that'll light up our call handling panel here. On the right hand side here, oh, login is, is Microsoft single point of login. So it's no need to manage second credentials or anything. And then these are the groupings of your internal contacts. And so this is taking the place. You mentioned a, a minute ago about the, that desktop console with the sidecar and buttons. These groups are taking the place of that sidecar. And so there's two things that live in this area. One is a, an Entry ID uh, search. And I have one set up here for Effort. That's our headquarters location. So anybody who is working out of the Effort location is going to show up in this search. Now, in a production setting, I'd have that divided up, uh, Effort of software developers, Effort of sales team, however it is that an organization thinks about the, its people. Um, but Entry ID search, so it's never going to have a dead link in here. If somebody leaves the company, they're just not going to be in there anymore. And if somebody new joins that matches that criteria, whether that search is set up around location or job title or department, they're going to show up here. And then the other thing in this area is that just a static My Favorites group that you can manually add contacts to that, it, that might be hard to build a search around. They might be across departments or across locations, but I want them in this group for some reason. I can. Yeah. Uh, you said that, that EAPA scenario, like I might be dealing with multiple people that don't align to a natural grouping, but I can set my own group up. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. We have a search field here in the center. Uh, of course, I can, I can search by a number of criteria. Whenever I uh, can see a contact card, I can uh, see their enhanced team's presence. And so just at a glance, I can tell who's available, who might be able to take a call and who won't be able to. I have all of the Entry ID information. I have a notes field where I can take notes on this uh, contact and just the never transfer a call after four, works from home on Tuesdays, whatever I want to remember about that person. I can. We say about Preston there, Shannon, that he's, uh, he's, he knocks off about four. Is that what we're saying? That's what we're saying. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's what we're saying. I think it's, I, I think it's a fake note, but sometimes these things are more true than you like to admit. That's really uh, cool we also, that you're able to add your own notes there. Cause that is yeah. a, a real world use case for like, be aware of this or remember that as well. That's really Remember cool. he's got upcoming vacation time or whatever it is that, yeah, that's, I can do a, a calendar glimpse of the contact. This follows Outlook permissions, so it's not going to give the receptionist permission to see a calendar that would she they normally would not. But it, yeah. it, again, can be helpful. If I have a call for Preston, he's in a meeting, I glance at his calendar and he's going to be off site the rest of the day. Probably don't want to transfer new business to him because he's not going to be able to get back to them. Yeah. So, and then the hierarchy view, just can I get it to somebody, his manager or somebody else on his team? or then direct reports. I, I can see all that there. All right, cool. All right. It's about how it handles calls. So let me uh, bring in some live calls here and we'll look at the call handling. When the call comes in, it's going to appear here at the top of my uh, call handling panel. And I have a couple options there. I can click on it. I'm going to use my F6 key to answer that call. Uh, we have, of course, we can put that call on hold and uh, we could answer another call. We could stack up calls on hold here. Whenever I have a live call, you have all these different ways that we can transfer that call. This uh, blind transfer is already selected because it's set as default in our settings. Any of these could be set as default though. So if I want to do a blind transfer, I don't have to touch anything here. I simply find my user, hit the transfer button, and with one click, I've done that transfer. When they answer that over here, it's going to disappear from my console and I've, I'm, I've taken care of that call. Um, and looking at a couple of the others. Let's bring another call here. Yeah. Um, and it's all about that efficiency there. Obviously, like a regular yeah. Teams client, you could transfer, but it's multiple clicks. Yeah. It's quite an intense process, whereas you're talking you, literally one you, click there. You have the multiple clicks. And you don't have the instant visibility of everybody. That's the, the thing that we find people missing the most is, yes, the efficiency of doing that transfer, but then also being able to tell at a glance who you can transfer to. Mm -hmm. Safe transfer is going, this is for that caller that you don't want to go to voicemail. You want them to talk to somebody. And so it's going, I'm going to maintain control of that. Caller goes on hold. They're trying the Teams demo user. But then if that team's demo user declines this call, this changed to failed safe transfer. So I know it didn't get through to them. If it had tried to go to voicemail, it would have done the same thing. Changes to failed safe transfer. 
and I know I got to do something else. So it's just allowing me to maintain control of that call to make sure it gets to the right place. Yeah, and there are some some organizations I've worked with in the past where they have a, a calls won't hit voicemail policy. So like yeah. certain legal firms, they don't, that's not yeah. part of the experience. Don't, it has yeah. to come back and be dealt with. Yeah. Consult transfer for when I want to talk to a coworker before I send the call through to them, works as expected. Then the chat consult transfer. This is a little bit different and, and we're getting more and more uh, organizations are finding this helpful. So I've selected chat consult transfer and I hit the transfer button. And so it goes, uh, they go on hold here. But then I have a Teams chat from Landis Attendant Bot, from receptionist. It's captured the caller ID information. And it's asking whoever I'm sending this to, would you like to accept, decline, or send this call to voicemail? If they accept or send to voicemail, the software takes care of that transfer. No further action on the receptionist. Mm -hmm. If they decline, it'll come back here as a decline. And that's so yeah. stick as an end user experience because you're not yeah. interrupting me with a call to ask if I want to take a call. Like I'm getting it, it in the chat, yeah. which is nice. So you're in a meeting, you're, you're sitting in a meeting and this pops up on your laptop and you can at a glance say, ah, no, I don't want that one. I'll just send it to voicemail or I'm going to accept that and I'm going to step out and take this call. Yeah. And then uh, I send it to myself, so I'm going to accept it and they'll just loop back in here again. And then that final transfer method is the add a participant. Some organizations call it a warm transfer. Essentially, it's making a three-way call where I would be saying, Tom, this is Preston. Preston, Tom has some questions for you today. And then I'm going to hit my end button, pull me out of the conversation, and the two of you will remain connected. But yeah, very efficient all of for after the just a, a day, a moment of using it. It's very intuitive for that end user, which often is not a technical user. So you want, we're not looking for something, uh, we're not designing this for the IT department, we're designing this for that end user that's going to be using it in a high volume situation all day. Yeah, and as a user here, so I've, that's probably going to be my primary console, I'm signed into that, but I'm yeah. using a regular Teams account, so I could use Teams instead as well, I'd like, how's that work? Yeah, yeah, so a couple of things is on that. For one, you're going to have your Teams open in another window where you're doing your chat, collaborating, all the things we do in Teams. And this is just going to be your phone, your endpoint for your for phone calls. But then also, if you were to log in from another device and you don't have this on or for whatever reason, you would still receive those calls in Teams. When you're used to the console, it's going to drive you mad. But but they, yeah, they would still deliver them to Teams if you're not logged into the attendant console. Yeah, say so like from a, from a kind of putting an IT hat on from like a service yeah. risk point of view. We're not changing the routing behavior here. If there was some issue that the teams would carry on or I had to jump to, I had to jump to iPad or Teams mobile yeah. app or whatever, yeah. I can carry on working. You can keep going. Yeah, exactly. You have that redundancy. The nice thing about our web app is also, so say your receptionist main computer goes down, they could simply grab a laptop log into the web app the, to their teams in the web app and they're back in business or or a weather event or whatever and they're working to log home from home saves all their settings and they're just ready to just log in and they're ready to go awesome and if people were like want to try this out is i'm presuming it's not really a heavy lift because it's an app based model is, no. is there an option to try this out yeah we have a getting started guide uh, that has the instructions for setting up a 30-day proof of concept uh, trial it is fully functioning software. It's fully supported. The setting this up is very simple minutes uh, to, to taking live calls. And the, the first time you set up, you need a global admin to, to grant permissions, all delegated permissions, no app level permissions. And you can be up and running, like I say, in minutes. There is actually a, a partner in the UK that has installed this in a number of universities. Uh, and they have their record is installing it and being ready to take a call in 29 seconds. That's their record. So <laughs> if somebody <laughs> wants to try that, we're, we're glad to revise that record. That's pretty so. amazing. <laughs> yeah. That's um, awesome. Um, what would you say, are the, uh, you, you obviously got experience with lots of different customers, but where would you say the, the, the typical use cases are across different verticals? You mentioned Edu there. That seems like yeah. an interesting one. Yeah, it's... Anybody who's live answering calls, it is helpful for. We've found, uh, we've done quite well in legal uh, yeah. education. We've done very well 
And it, it just seems to fit for a number of you know, we, a wide range of industries, but those two just off the cuff. I work with a lot of attorneys. Yeah. I work with a lot of uh, universities and, and uh, schools. Anyone with kind of heavy call flow scenarios, basically, that has to deal yeah. with that. And that's sorry. And again, yeah. Yeah. No, no no dependency here on the contact center. You could have no contact center, yeah. A, another contact center. You could still run this client side. Exactly. My specialty here is the attendant console. And I am happy to sell attendant console standalone by itself. That's what it's designed for. We don't view it as, uh, hey, we get the foot in the door and, and then we're going to hard sell other things. Because it, it's a product that's, it was our first product and it stands alone by itself very well. That's great. So what about, I'm going to ask the hard question now, Shannon, what about commercials? How's this work? Yeah, so no long-term uh, contracts, uh, month-to-month contract. We can do annual if uh, it's easier for you. But it's a per-named user license, and uh, it is uh, 90, uh, 95 US dollars per named user per month. And that is your all-in. There's That includes our support, uh, on, uh, both implementation support and ongoing support, uh, which we have. We have a very robust support team. They We have 24-7, 365 support for emergency tickets or urgent tickets, and then all others are handled, East Coast US business hours, but they're they're strong. It also would include a uh, training call so we can get on with your end users. And you know how it is, uh, Tom, The if they learn how to use it on day one and are comfortable with it, that implementation process goes so much easier. And so uh, yeah, we say, uh, and these allow are the us to get on with them. Yeah, definitely. These are the power users who, you know, when you're doing a yeah. Teams phone project, this is an important set of yeah. users to get right because they, they have influence yeah. and you're impacting their workflow. I have, you know, we see it where this reception user uh, has held up Teams deployments uh, because they look at native Teams and they say, that's just not going to work. And yeah. uh, we ha- I had one organization that we did recently and they said they had come up to the edge of, of deploying three different times. And finally, they got a solution in our attendant console that the receptionist would go along with and went forward with the project. Yeah, they're a tough audience to please, but rightly like they're used to and tra- classic PBX is often had specific workflows for this and specific yes. buttons. So you have to meet that capability. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. And is that as little as one seat and up? Do I have to buy a bunch of seats or is it, oh, can I buy a user? One. Yeah, you can buy one. There's some volume discounts when we get into larger organizations that have, are deploying 20 or more, but yeah, we, we're happy to do one or often we'll do one and then they, they have a backup for that receptionist. And yeah, we're happy to do one. No, I love that. I love, I love to see the option of month to month. I love to see one user and up for it. It's not a, so often you again, sometimes you get these prices. It's well, yeah, but that's yeah. 10, 10 seats. Like, yeah, we, we yeah, have, no. we have 10 receptionists. No gotchas. <laughs> <laughs> that's wicked. Yeah. Cool. Very good. So, Jen, if, if people want to find out more or test it out, what's the best thing to yeah. do? They can go to landistechnologies.com. They can reach out to myself or a partner. On that website, there would be a, at landistechnologies.com. If they click on the attending console page, there would be a link where they could start a trial or they could request a demo. I'm always happy to to jump on and do a full dem- demo for a customer that they can see how it works and then they can get that trial started and make sure it works in there like they wanted to in their environment. Awesome. I think it's a really great solution. Thanks for taking the time to share it with us. Yeah, and if you want to check it out, uh, do hit the website and I say it's a client side and from one user and up. So it's not a heavy lift to, to give it a go and see if it's a fit yeah. for you. Shannon, thanks for the time. Appreciate it. Hey, thanks a lot, Tom. And thanks for the opportunity.